Hey guys, it's Jen Ferguson here with Artistic Painting Studio. In today's tutorial, we're going to do a fun holiday door hanger. So excited about this project, it's going to be fun. Um, we're going to start with Napa Red for our base coat color which is a nice deep red, and I thought that would be gorgeous. Um, I have grabbed some of our cut out snowflakes that we're gonna attach to the door hanger. And not only do we have snowflakes, but we're also gonna have snowflake foil as well. So we've got some fun stuff with this, and we're just gonna get started. I'm working with just an acrylic, we're on just a wood cutout. So a good acrylic paint always will work good. And I'm just gonna do one of my cheating methods here and just put the paint right onto the project, guys. <laughs> okay, reds are never fun. You can see how it looks pinky. So realize that you'll have to put a couple of coats on if you go for the same coloration or you can definitely pick whatever color uh, works better for your holiday decor. And maybe find a color that covers better than Napa Red, okay? I'm gonna say that this is gonna take probably at least two to three coats before we have full coverage. And reds are just that way. I don't know if I have any good red to recommend. So I'm going to try to speed up our dry process. I'm gonna cheat, <laughs> which I normally don't do much of, but we're gonna grab that blow dryer and we're going to dry our layers and try to get our base coat on here as fast as we can. As we're waiting for um, our third coat of red to dry, and I'm gonna go for this. It's not perfect, I've got a little bit of streakiness, but I think that's gonna be a really fun look. It almost looks like a, a slight wood grain, okay? That's gonna be fun. So next thing I'm gonna do is just base coat all of the snowflakes and black because I really like black underneath silver foil, okay? It just pops it and I know it seems like a strong, strong contrast, but it works great. Working on small little details that have tons of little cutouts like this, a foam brush or even a foam pouncer brush works great. That way you can keep all of the paint on just the top edge and we don't have to get anything down the sides as these would be very challenging to try to uh, paint everywhere, okay? So I'm just gonna get all three of these done. And then because I put so many coats on the red, we're gonna let that dry for a couple hours uh, before we go to our next step. Okay, let's let all this paint dry and we'll be back in a little bit. The base coats are all dry and ready for some foil. And I am going to be using um, Elsa. Okay, this is our gorgeous snowflake that looks beautiful over anything on our door tag and then we're going to use some silver over the snowflakes and I think we're going to use one or both of these okay I think this will be fun and they'll be so complimentary to pick up all of the silver from the snowflakes so the first thing we need to do is to get this ready we're going to be applying our foil adhesive to the surface so we're going to be using our Artsyville embellishments foil adhesive and I want to put the Elsa on the top and the bottom and leave the middle open because we're gonna come back and do a vinyl stencil on here or a vinyl transfer, okay? We're just gonna cut out some words and make this really cute and fun. So what I was kind of figuring is you might wanna determine how far down 
Maybe you want to bring the snowflakes, okay? And you can determine that kind of based on what you're gonna add. I'm using the ruler to try to create a straight line because it is a quilter's ruler. It has all these lines on there so I can try to be perfectly straight or as straight as I can. And let's see, let's do, so let's do this one first. I'm trying to figure out which side I'm gonna be taping on, okay? So if we go here and go to about there, I'm going to try to make sure I've got that ruler perfectly straight and use my tape. Tape off that area, okay? I was trying not to put a mark on here because the foil is a transparent foil, so it's not going to cover anything up. And I'm just going to make sure I'm pretty straight. I feel like I'm a little bit off, okay? That's a little bit better. Let's see if I can do this one a little bit easier, okay? <laughs> can I bring that down a little bit lower? So this whole center area is gonna be left that red, okay? So it's not gonna have the foil in the background because I don't want it to get too busy where I come in. And I think I'm gonna put on here, let it snow. So the foil adhesive is gonna go on the top and the bottom because that's the only place we're gonna transfer. So let me get my foil out of the way and my ruler. And I'm just gonna double check here that I'm pretty close. I think we're pretty darn close, okay? And now it's just gonna be easier because I've got some bigger areas to actually use a little foam, or not foam roller, but this is a low nap roller. And normally I try to always find a quarter inch nap rollers because I think they work best with the adhesive. And in between using it on projects, I just keep it wrapped in press and seal so that it will stay, stay fresh. See, I'm gonna take this stuff to the paper here. Let's fold that over so it doesn't get on the edges. Okay, because this is been in press and seal, I wanna go ahead and go on to the ornaments first without reloading it, because I figure there's probably enough adhesive left on there to cover these and it won't be seeping everywhere. So even the small projects you can do with these foam rollers, not foam, sorry, keep saying foam. This is a lone app, okay? <laughs> you can try it with foam roller as well. Uh, the only thing about the foam rollers is they can tend to create bubbles in your product, so you might wanna have to smooth it out a little bit more, okay? And then just make sure that you're getting enough of the adhesive on there as well. Foam's a little bit trickier, so the low nap works the best. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit more adhesive on the roller because now we're going over a larger section. So get more of that on there. My tape keeps getting stuck, okay? And roll the surface area that you plan on adding the foil. As you can see, when the adhesive goes on, it does go on looking milky white. So you can pretty well see where it's going. And then when you're using a roller, just roll back over a couple of times to try to soften up any of your roller marks and kind of soften the texture that you're creating as well. Okay, I'm gonna grab just a tiny bit more. I wanna make sure there's plenty of adhesive on here. We wanna make sure we're getting a good transfer. If you don't have adhesive, you're not going to get your foil transfers. So make sure you're covered well. Okay, this will take about 30 minutes to an hour to dry. 
um, to a nice firm hard tack. It will go clear and shiny. Make sure to give it plenty of time. It's better to wait longer than try to push things faster, okay? So as soon as this is dry, um, we'll be back for our foil transfer. Now for the fun part, let's get our foils transferred. Okay, I'm going to push that up away and we're gonna do our snowflakes first, okay? And like I said, I've got two different foils here. They're both like a glittery silver. Um, this one is sparkle and this one is twinkle, okay? So sparkle is the tinier of the little sparkle and I think we're gonna use that one. So I'm gonna position where maybe I can get all of them out of this one sheet. If not, we'll use the other one as well. So just put the foil over the top and scrub the surface like I'm doing. Peek underneath, double check to make sure you're getting the transfer you want. Sometimes getting a little scrubber pad can also get those edges really well for you that maybe the brush doesn't get. Let's peek under this last section. Okay, look how gorgeous that is. Okay, let's see if we can get them all on here. If I position well. Close, we'll see. <laughs> okay, two done. Let's see if our third one will fit or not. Okay, so just a little trick. I have this on top of the foil. So this is the carrier side, just to make sure there's enough room to get that one on there. And another little trick I've done with small things like this as well, is you can flip over and put it upside down on the transfer seat sheet. That way you can see exactly where it needs to go and flip it over and scrub. So a couple little tricks there to make sure you can use all of your foil up well, not waste anything. And then just double check those edges. That's where I always feel like I sometimes don't get enough pressure on. Perfect. So now we've got three silver snowflakes and we're going to get to our tag door hanger here. So I'm going to get this over and I'm working with one of the transparent foils. And I can almost assume just because of the way the foil is curling that which side is the transfer side and which side is the carrier side. And I think this is the transfer side, but I'm just going to double check with a piece of tape. And yep, I was right. Okay, so it came off. So you can use blue tape, scotch tape. Just make sure you're on the correct side, okay? And let me grab my door hanger and I'm going to do one section at a time. Make sure I have this over the red area. And I went further than my foil adhesive just so I made sure I wasn't short. Okay. Let's get this transferred. Scrub it. Scrub the edge as well because we're on one of the transparent foils where you really want to scrub those edges. So make sure that you're getting as full release as possible because these like pull off in a film okay so you should have almost a hundred percent coverage with these yay look how cute that is oh my gosh elsa is beautiful over any color okay let's get the other section done again i want to make sure i'm all the way over the section that is has the adhesive and as you can see I'm overlapped over the area that doesn't but it's not going to transfer anywhere you don't have adhesive on so let's scrub the whole thing and then I talk about this in our video about the transparent foils all the time but anywhere where you have an opening like this that's in the middle of the design most likely it's going to do what we call an over transfer and that part of the film will release from the carrier as well. So that's why we talk about pulling in towards the design so that you don't end up with, oh, scrub those edges. So maybe it's not going to, okay? Because you don't want to waste anything by getting what we call an over release. 
Ooh, that came out great, okay? So just scrubbing that inside edge around that circle area was perfect. Okay, what we're gonna do next is I wanna top coat and protect everything because we're gonna come in with a vinyl lettering and transfer over the middle section and I wanna protect the foils before I do that. So we're gonna be using our final coat, which is a wipe on varnish and uh, my favorite way to apply this. You can brush it, but I really like to use the microfiber sponges that we sell with this. And I am gonna put some fresh product on here. So unscrew the lid, put the pad over the top and tip it. Now don't pull these apart from each other. You're just allowing some of the product to get in there. And then you can reposition to a different section of the pad if you need to, depending on how much product you might need for how large your surface area is. And this is so easy to work with that all you're gonna do is just wipe it on, okay? So we're going to put it over the painted area, the transferred foil area, and cover everything. Now it goes on super thin, so it dries really quick. We're gonna also do our snowflake ornaments, and this will dry. You can even pounce it on if you feel like you're not getting enough coverage on these little areas. But it will dry in about 10, 15 minutes, kind of depending on how warm your environment is. And you can just keep layering it and layering it. So I'm gonna give this like 10 minutes. I'm gonna put on about two more layers so we've got really good coverage. And then we'll get out our vinyl lettering. I just went on to Etsy and found a cute little font that said, let it snow and decided we're just gonna make a stencil. So I'm gonna weed out the part of the design that we're going to be painting, okay? And this is uh, out of vinyl, so it's gonna be a one-time use stencil. So all you do is weed out the parts that you need to paint, okay? So I'm gonna be weeding out the words here. Okay, just be careful to only pull out the part that you're gonna be wanting to paint. I'm just making sure all of the elements are out. And then we're gonna be using transfer tape to transfer it over to our surface. Okay, so I'm just pulling the backing off of the tape and I'm gonna get it lined up over the design try to get it on here straight and then I can remove the backing off of that. And then you want to smooth it out, try to get rid of any bubbles and get it to where the vinyl, okay, is going to stick to the transfer tape so that we can move this over. So we're going to try and make sure that I'm burnishing this really good. This is just a plastic tool this is called a magic master, okay? <laughs> At least that's the name on it, but uh, it just basically burnishes the surface for you. Because what we're gonna do now is position it. Okay, I wanna cut it a little bit smaller so that I can see the top and bottom of the design. Get a better idea of where I wanna position this. Just kind of balancing it from side to side, top to bottom. Once you feel like you are where you want to be, okay, I'm just going to use a piece of blue tape to make what I call a hinge. I'm going to push that across the top, and then that way I can flip up the pattern, okay? I make sure that you can see what I'm doing well here. And then we're gonna remove the backing piece off of the vinyl. So everything should be sticking to the transfer tape, but pull off slow and just make sure that it is, especially on that little snowflake. Uh, see this part that it's up there. 
Okay. Now you can just smooth it right into place. Take the hinge off. But I'm going to save this piece of tape because I'm probably going to use it again, okay? So let's just put it over there for now. And now you can remove the transfer piece. Just making sure that your final is staying in position. So I try to roll it back like directly instead of pulling it up, just roll it kind of back on itself. That way you can make sure everything's staying in position. The transfer tape is pretty sticky, okay? But you wanna make sure everything is staying on your surface. Because the design cut kind of too close on this one edge, I'm just going to tape that off to give it the edge it needs and also use this across the top because I'm really narrow in those areas and I don't want to go outside the lines when I'm stenciling, okay? I think there's a couple of other places I'm going to do this too. So I'm just making the basically the stencil a little wider so that we don't end up going off the surface. Okay, we're going to be painting this with our Modern Master Silver Paint, which covers beautifully, okay? So out of all the metallic paints that I've ever worked with, the Modern Master's Metallic Silver, the coverage is fabulous. So we're going to be doing a dry brush stenciling technique which that means we are going to pick up just a little bit of paint, work it onto the plate, okay? So you're working the paint into the brush and then go over to your paper towel and do what seems ridiculous, like taking all of it off. <laughs> okay, so you can either pounce or swirl, but because we're going over that really dark red, we're probably gonna have to go across here a couple of times to get the strength I want of this color. Okay, once you've gone all the way across the, de the design, and I kind of went from left to right, left to right, so that way I know I can come right back up to here where I started and add a second layer. And this should opaque the um, silver really well with a second layer because I really want that to pop off of that dark surface. So I want to make sure that I'm basically just filling in the holes, okay? <laughs> Which is not always what I want to do with my stencils, but we're just looking for the letters to pop and for this to have some really good contrast. So just go ahead and come back over for a second layer. If you are doing a dry brush technique, the paint should be dry after that first pass, enough to come back and put on a second pass. If you don't feel it is, you could always hit it with a blow dryer really quick and just make sure that first layer is dry so that the second layer does build. And you should be able to tell that we still can kind of see some of the red where I haven't put the second layer on and the top part looks really good. Okay, once you're happy with the way everything looks, I would gently pull off your tape border, okay? That way you're not fighting that. And then let's go ahead and grab our vinyl stencil. And I'm just using my pick tool to kind of get a corner lifted up and then it should come off with no problem after that. When it starts going in many different directions, sometimes you just have to cut that vinyl. <laughs> okay. 
And then get my tape bow, my hands here, and go ahead and just pick out the rest of the vinyl pieces. These pick tools um, can be found at Harbor Freight. I think they're called dental pick tools, okay? They are wonderful for doing these types of projects or anything that just kind of feels like it's got stuck to the surface and you need to pick it out. Just finish up our little snowflake. Lots of little bits and pieces here. Oh my gosh, you guys. Look how cute that is. So we want to go ahead and put another clear coat over the top of this, but I want to let this dry for a little bit because that paint is fresh. And then we're going to come back and just add our snowflakes wherever we want and finish this off. I think that's going to be adorable. I've added on a couple more coats of our top coat, and I did cover this one also in our Modern Masters Master Clear because it's exterior rated and this one might go on a front door. So to finish this off, I'm gonna add these adorable little snowflakes, they're wooden, and uh, the easiest way to attach something this lightweight is actually using our foil adhesive, okay? So just take the same foil adhesive that we foil with and put it on the back side of the ornament. And normally when we stipple on, I always say, you know, pounce it out a little bit and soften it up, but we're just gonna leave it on there. Now, I know I want some of these to come over the edge, so I'm not going to do the whole ornament, okay? And I'm only gonna put it on the half that we plan on attaching. We're gonna let the other side hang off. And I want to do that down here as well. So just kind of figuring out what part to not put the adhesive on, okay? Now once you have the adhesive on for gluing purposes, you want to let it sit here for, I want to say maybe about five minutes. You're wanting it to get tacked up, okay? And the whites start to go away, but you don't have to let this go to a firm tack like normally we do when we're gonna transfer our foils. But once it starts tacking up to a point that it will not seep, this is wonderful because you're gonna have a glue on here that is not gonna seep underneath when you go to attach it. So we're gonna give these just a couple more minutes to tack up and then we'll attach them. Okay, once you have given the adhesive about 5-10 minutes to set up, it should be starting to clear out maybe just a little white still. And then you can put this over here in front of us, figure out where you want them. I'd hold it on top of it and just try to decide the angle, position, and then just stick it right down. Uh, these are, pressure, it's a pressure sensitive type of glue, so you shouldn't have any problem with just sticking. Now, I wouldn't try this with something too heavy, but I found with all of my lightweight wood pieces and also the poly onlay that our adhesive works great to glue stuff on, okay? So there you go. Um, this is ready to go hang on your door or to decorate your house. Thank you so much for joining me for this Let It Snow tutorial. All the materials and supplies can be found in the description below. And make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our upcoming tutorials.